Hi, in the previous video, we talked about how to work with multi selects in Splunk Dashboard Studio, correct? Now, let's talk about another kind of input in Splunk Dashboard Studio, which is very, I think it is newly introduced as well in Splunk Dashboard Studio and it was not present explicitly in the in the older like the XML framework. So let, let me show you that one. So if I just go to edit. So we, if I just go to that input section, so we already discussed about the drop downs, multi select. The another thing is left called the number. So it's basically like if you want to specifically uh, input the numbers, you can use this particular input over here in the dashboard studio. So today's use case will be, let's say like in our, in our time chart, correct for this, for this, let's say for this one or this one. So currently we have not used any kind of specific span, right? So it is basically the Splunk is automatically de determining the span based on the data we are having it over here. So let's introduce span now and probably like what we'll do is uh, we will pass the value of for that span from this input over here. Okay, so that we'll get an idea about how to work with number inputs as well as like how to pass this input token into our search over here okay so so before that let me just do a very kind of uh, so this this one we created in the previous video right so i'll just make it as um, i'll just copy this one over here because both are active cases trained right so i'll just give it a name over here as well and if you want you can change the background color of this guy as well to white so that both of them looks something like this one so this is nothing like necessary i just did it for just clarity purpose now so so let's work on this guy over here now this guy is using a search called active cases trend ms right for multi-select so if i just go to data so this is our search over here and if I just click on the search, if you see for the time chart, we do not have used any kind of span over here. Like we can use something like span equals to one minute or one day, something like that. So let's keep it very simple for this use case. So we will just try to use a day's span, like one day, two day, and maximum people can in like enter five days of span okay and minimum they can enter like one days of span over here so if i just do something like one day so this is how it will look like right so if i just do run and save so this guy will have that span equals to one day enabled now probably it will it will not have any change over here but if you if you go to view mode and run this search over here you will come to know behind the scene how splunk is generating the data so if you see it like for each and every day it is creating the buckets over here correct so so let us try to implement that one now so what i'll do is i already added we have already added this number input over here right so in the edit mode let's give it a name called time chart span S P A in span and bracket will say in days okay so that we can remove the confusion here token name i can give span here now for the number inputs there are three important characteristics or properties it has one is the minimum value another is the maximum value another is the step value over here so something like this one. So let's see if I give minimum value as two, we'll come back to our use case later and maximum value as 20. And let's say step I give three. Okay, so what will happen? So if I just save it, save it. Now, if I just go to the view mode and refresh this guy now, default value is still 10. I I have given it over there, right? So that's why it will show 10 over here. Now, what will happen if I just want to input one? If I just click outside, it will automatically take two because it's the minimum value. Same for maximum value as well. So like if you want to input any value greater than 20, it will not take that one. So if we click outside, it will automatically click 20 over here. And if you see there is an auto increment, correct? Like 
if I just say let's say 10 if I just have 10 over here and I click on this up and down arrow so that increment will be by 3 because we have we have this step as 3 over here okay so that's how it will work over here so so for our use case as we said user can input minimum one day maximum they can input five days and let's say step equals to one that is fine like one two three four five that they can do and default value will be one day over here for us okay so that's for the input configuration now we need to pass this token into our search right which is basically populating this chart so let us do that one so we will just go over here and this is the search we are using it over there right so i click on over here now instead of span equals to one day what i'll do is i will pass that token over here that span token we have created here as a part of this input over here right so once i do that i will keep this d over here because i need this d to tell splunk like my span is one day two day three day or four day so in, like it will not allow any other span like hour or minutes over here as a part of this 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 span over here okay so that's why this d is also important so if i just click on run and save okay so now if i just click on save view and try to refresh our dashboard now so if you see like by default it's starting with one now if i just click on over here so as my step is one so it will move to two so now my span will be two days over here okay the same way we have checked it over there if i just run the query now so it should basically create the buckets for the two days over here instead of one days if you see it after 21 23 23 25 something like this one over here okay so that means the span whatever we have passed it over here if you see like query as well like it will it will show it over here as well like it is it is working over here so that's the way you will be using this this number inputs in in splunk dashboard studio so hopefully this video was helpful see you in the next video